Hello there, folks. This quick video today is going to be talking about how to use a CSV spreadsheet, comma separated variable spreadsheet, that has a bunch of uh, string tags in it, how to import that into a Redline HMI, and display that data on the HMI. Yeah, this example here is uh, used a lot in the saltwater disposal site applications, SWD sites in the oil and gas industry. And so in this uh, case, what I actually have here is uh, I've got an HMI connected here. And on the HMI, I have uh, an SD memory card. This is one of the new graphite HMIs. They use the SD memory cards, which is great. And on the SD memory card, I have a directory call or uh, called SWD. So let me go ahead and open that up here. So you can see here, folks, I'm connected via USB currently to this particular HMI. And on the HMI, I have a directory called SWD right here. So if I double click on that, you can see here that I've got a listing of a truck companies and drivers. So for instance, let me open up the truck companies to show you what this CSV file looks like. Well, there it is, and you hit OK. And you can see right here, folks, that the truck company has a listing of multiple companies, uh, ABC, Transport, Bandit, Bussing, Dean's Express, some other companies in here, Freedom Hall, Greyhound, you name it, I just made up some names. So uh, we've got a listing here of many trucking companies, but also notice that I've got another column here called Company Code. Now this is very important, the company code column in this example, because the customer is going to pick the trucking company that they might work for, but the driver must know the appropriate company code to validate that's who they're talking to. So keep in mind I've got a company code here in this one, so let me close it down. <clears throat> let me also open up the driver's spreadsheet here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the list of approved drivers in our listing. And so if you look here on the drivers, I've got a number of names here that uh, were an example, and then I've also added some names, uh, such as Julio Glaces. Yeah. Anybody else in there? No. Uh, but anyway, I've added a bunch of names. I want you to notice here, though, that again, I've got a company code category here. What I did here, folks, is I took the listing of the drivers that the customer had, and I sorted by this column based on the name. And of course, the company code will follow with that, but I sorted by this. So I want to show you what happens here in a little bit. So uh, there's the two examples of the Excel spreadsheet. Notice there's a column for the index, which you don't have to do that, but I put that in. The next column is the driver's names. The next column is the company code. And then you can have more columns too, but that's what I'm playing with for this example. So just keep in mind, that's what's currently on the SD uh, memory card within the HMI all nested within a directory called SWD. So let's go back to our HMI here. So uh, here's the uh, Crimson 3 uh, program here. And uh, let me go ahead and show you it working first, and then I'll get back to uh, how it operates. So I'm going to go to the web server so I can bring it up live here. And uh, notice right now that pick a company and pick a driver are currently blank. So if I click on this pick a company, What's going to happen is the HMI is going to go out to the SD drive and it's going to populate this tag called company names with the listings of the companies. Notice prior to me pressing on this that you can see the company code is uh, blank here. Normally you wouldn't be displaying this, but I just want to show you uh, that will match the company. And then I'll show you a little further test here. But let me click on this. Bam. Now you didn't notice it, but it went super fast. It went out to the drive and it just read in all that. And if I click the up arrow here, I can go through the listing of the companies in that Excel spreadsheet. Okay. So fly by night trucking. Who doesn't love that company? So if I go back to the list and we'll just start with the first one, ABC Transport right here. So I hit the enter button here. It's going to pick it. And notice it put ABC Transport in here. And it also pulled up the company code. Now, again, you wouldn't show this, but what we would have here in this example is a test. So the operator uh, has picked this, but we would have a pop-up, and they would have to enter in 
the company code. So if I click right here, bam, I'm going to put in a company code. Uh, let me exit out of this. Notice right here the company pass field is currently off. If this code matches this, that validates that the company code is good, and it clears that the person actually knows the right number for this company. So if I enter in here, click there, and I'll just put in uh, uh, four, five, six, seven, for instance. Notice that this probably will stay off. I'll click OK. Bam, didn't change. Need to make that feel a little bigger. But anyway, if I go ahead and click again and put in the number 3333 right there, click Enter, notice it passed. So now I have validated that this guy knows the correct code for that company. Now if I come down here to pick a driver, what I'm looking for this time is a driver for that company. And I don't know off the top of my head, team, a particular driver. But let's go here. No, it'll notice I'll hit the up arrow. It's going to pull up a listing of the drivers that are available. Now the problem, I didn't memorize this, but let's say I pick Mr. Arthur Lopez here. Click Enter. His code happens to be 5276. I'm looking for somebody who works for this company, and I don't even know if I have that in the spreadsheet, so hold on. Let's go here to Drivers. And we'll open this up here. I don't know why this software is doing this to me today. We'll go there. And what I'm looking for is does, does that, I may have made that company up. I don't see anybody in here with a company code of 333. So I think what we'll do instead, team, is let's use a company 5276. Uh, that's got Aaron. We'll pick Aaron Furlow next time. And let's see what company he works for. Let's go here. 5276 happens to be Salty Dog Trucking Company. Great. So let's go back to here. We're going to pick this time Salty Dog. So we'll go down here to Salty Dog. Bam, right there. 5276. Arthur Lopez was the name that I'd picked. So in this case, um, you wouldn't have to have this secondary test. What I would do is, uh, once this is validated, then I would somehow limit this to not show anybody who didn't work for Salty Dog. But anyway, if I put in 5276 again here, it validates good there. And at that point, you're off to the races and you're going on down the logic that you would do at your salt water disposal site. Now, one other thing I also have here on this HMI is I added a file viewer PDF as well. So if I click right here, I bring up the actual file viewer uh, primitive on the HMI. And you can see right here, I'm, I could have did it this way too. I'm showing the truck company CSV file in the raw format. Notice it doesn't have columns because this is truly just a raw format. However, uh, if I go to the next program in here, I can now see the file listings of the drivers. And I can actually tab through all the different drivers that are in there in this particular case. So uh, pretty cool little application there. Anyway, that is just the example of the saltwater disposal site. Let me quickly show you how this operates, team. Let me go back here. So we're back in Crimson, the actual software. It's written to program these awesome products. And uh, so when I click on this field right here, if I right click and go to properties, uh, I just got a tag here, no big deal. If I go to the entry tab, I want you to notice here, team, that right away on the entry tab, when I select, I am going to a program over here on the right side. There's a program under SWD Logic called Load Trucking Companies. So I'm immediately calling that program. So let's go ahead and take a look at that program, shall we? Over here on the left, we go to Programs. Let's go ahead and expand our SWD logic. Click on our Load Trucking Company. And here is the code that is running within milliseconds. Yeah, super fast. Anyway, uh, so if you look here, there's the saltwater disposal site path for the directory. And there's the name of the file that's on there. You could, of course, make this a tag and uh, navigate manually if you want to. But nonetheless, so that goes in. And then what I have is a simple while loop that reads each line. And if there's a blank line, it's done to the end of the file. But if not, it actually takes the tag name and puts the company name into a certain field in here. And I'm using a function called mid, which... Uh, We'll go in and find the commas 
and then does some logic based on the uh, location of the commas and how many characters that you want you may want left or right of the comma. So uh, that's what happens there. It loads in those values. The other part of this that's a little bit tricky, team, uh, is um, on this example is over here in the data tags on the left. What threw me for a loop on this example was the customer, the end customer in this case, wanted, let me reiterate, they, we don't actually have a pull down menu right here. Maybe someday we'll have one. So the customer wanted the listing here, which is a little bit different for us in red line right now. I don't have that kind of a, a widget, if you will. Maybe someday I'll write one. But So what I did here to make a little workaround is on the left hand side, I created a uh, tag, an integer tag, a data tag it's called driver. Well, let me go here, company name. I got a company name here. I'm focused on the company here. And on the format tab for the company name, here's where I got tricky. I went down and I made this a multi state tag. Now, I have other videos that cover multi state. This is kind of an advanced multi state, but I gave it up to 25. So right now, that means this application could only have a total of 25 companies listed. No big deal, you can change that. Then what I did, normally down here you have some fixed text in this field here. Well, what I did, team, is I created an array tag, an array tag here, and I went and I took each element for that array tag. So notice it's company name here. Uh, over here, if I click on this company name, hit the little toggle array, and you can see there are individual elements here. The block parentheses is like the index right there. That's like the J or the I when you're writing code, if you look at code. So what I had to do, I manually, uh, this was a little bit of work, I had to manually drag each individual element over here to give me my first 25. But notice the number here, 17, 18. Pretend that's a variable. That is a variable, if you will. Pretend it's a variable. Because, notice company name, if I go back to programs on the left, here I am in load trucking companies, look at here team, you see right here company name, that parentheses and there's the little I right there, that is the variable that I'm incrementing. And notice when I get done, when I first jump in here, I is zero, after I'm done right here, I increment to one, reads the next line of the code, oh it's still not blank, well then I'm going to go ahead and do the next one. So this is what does the magic for me in creating this particular pull down menu, which is pretty cool. So uh, anyway, that's just a quick video on a saltwater disposal site uh, application using a CSV file. You can do all kinds of things with the CSV file concept. Really, you could. Uh, if you're interested in the database uh, or the CSV files, so you can play with this on your own, hey, uh, post a comment on the uh, video yeah, or send me your uh, email address and I'll be glad to share that information with you. You guys have a great day now. Thanks a lot for watching. See you later.